fact that the assembly line goes through so fast that they cannot do their work properly. Their pride in craftsmanship is itself to me. Let, let me just mention another. Well, I, I just happened to look recently at a uh, study of uh, longevity in some journal of gerontology. Don't ask me why I was reading that. And uh, it uh, tried to trace the factors that you could use to predict longevity, length of life. And, uh, you know, cigarette smoking, drinking, uh, genetic factors, everything was looked at. It turned out that the factor that was the highest predictor, the most successful predictor, was job satisfaction. Now, people who have nice jobs live long. People who are satisfied with their jobs. Now, what leads to job satisfaction? So, and I think that makes a good deal of sense, you know, because that's where you spend your life and that's where your creative activities are. Now, what leads to job satisfaction? Well, I think many things lead to it. And the knowledge that you're doing something useful to the community is an important part of that, which many people feel. I mean, many people feel and uh, uh, many people who are satisfied with their work are people who feel that what they're doing is important to do. They can be teachers, they can be doctors, they can be scientists, they can be craftsmen, they can be farmers. I mean, I think the feeling that what you're doing is important, is worth doing, you know, contributes to those with whom you have social bonds. That's a very significant factor in, in one's personal satisfaction. And over and above that, there's the pride in, uh, and the, and the self-fulfillment that comes from a job well done, from simply taking your skills and putting them to use. And I don't see any reason why that should be, uh, why that should in any way harm. In fact, I should think that that would enhance the value of what's produced. But let's imagine still that at some level it does harm it. Well, okay, at that point, the society, the community, has to decide how to make compromises. Each individual is both a producer and a consumer, after all. And that means that each individual has to join in those socially determined compromises, if in fact there are compromises. And again, I feel that the nature of the compromise is much exaggerated because of the distorting prism of uh, a really coercive uh, and self-destruct and personally destructive system right. in which you we say live. the community has to make decisions about compromises. And um, of course, communist theory provides for this in its whole thinking about national planning, decisions about uh, investment, directions of investment and uh, so forth. In an anarchist society, uh, it would seem that the, you, you're not willing to provide for that amount of uh, governmental superstructure that would be necessary to uh, make the plans, to make the investment decisions, to decide these kind of uh, compromises into, between uh, whether you give priority to what people want to consume or whether you give priority to the work people want to do. I don't agree with that. I mean, it seems to me that anarchist, or for that matter, left Marxist mm. structures mm. based on systems of workers' councils and federation provide exactly the set of levels of decision-making at which decisions can be made about a national plan. Similarly, state socialist societies also provide a level of decision-making, let's say, the nation, at which national plans can be produced. There's no difference in that respect. The difference has to do with the, uh, with the participation in those decisions and control over those decisions. The anarchist and left Marxist views, views like the workers' councils theory of say, the council communists who were Marxists, left Marxists. In their views, those decisions are made by the informed working class through uh, their assemblies and their direct representatives who live among them and work among them. In the state socialist systems, the national plan is made by a, by a, federal, by a national bureaucracy uh, which accumulates to itself all relevant information, uh, makes decisions, offers them to the public, and occasionally, every few years, puts itself, uh, uh, comes before the public and says, you can pick me or you can pick him, but we're all part of this uh, remote bureaucracy. These are the, these are the uh, poles, these are the polar opposites within the, so within the socialist tradition. So in fact, there's a very considerable role for the state and possibly even for Not civil for servants for bureaucracy, but it's the control over it that's different. Well, see, I don't, as I say, I don't really believe that we need a separate bureaucracy to carry out... Uh, governmental decisions. You need various forms of expertise. Ah, yeah, but expert, see, expertise is very much, let's take expertise with regard to economic planning. Okay, there's certainly in any complex industrial society, there should be a group of technicians whose task is to produce plans uh, and to uh, lay out the consequences of decisions, to show and explain uh, to people who have to make the decisions that if you decide this, you're going to likely get this consequence, because that's what our linear programming model shows and so on. But the point is that those planning systems are themselves, well, they're industries, and they are simply part of the, they will have their workers' councils, and they will be part of the whole council system. And, one, and, and the distinction is that these planning 
systems do not make decisions. They produce plans in exactly the same way as automakers produce autos. The plans are then available for the, for the workers' councils and uh, council assemblies the same way that autos are available to ride in. Now, of course, what this does require is an informed and educated working class. But that's precisely what we are capable of achieving in advanced industrial societies. And this is really basically the last question, which is, how far does the success of uh, libertarian socialism or anarchism as a way of life really depend on a fundamental change in the nature uh, of man, both in his motivation, his altruism, and also in his knowledge and sophistication? I think it not only depends on it, but in fact, the whole purpose of libertarian socialism is that it will contribute to it. Uh, it will contribute to a spiritual transformation, precisely that kind of great transformation in, uh, in the way humans conceive of themselves and their uh, ability to act, to decide, to create, to produce, to inquire, precisely that spiritual transformation that uh, social thinkers from the left Marxist tradition, from Lex Luxembourg, say, on over through anarcho-syndicalists have always emphasized. So on the one hand, it requires that spiritual transformation. On the other hand, the, its purpose is to create institutions which will contribute to that transformation.